So in the Boyle's Law Lab, when you have to do your interpolation for the vapor pressure, you find your two points off the vapor pressure table. So my temperature is 23.9 degrees Celsius, which falls between 23 and 24. So um, if you watch the video on interpolation, you know that the first thing you got to do is calculate your slope, which is the change in y over the change in x. So 3.0 minus 2.8 divided by 24 minus 23. My slope would be 0.2 kPa over 1 degrees Celsius. I am going to use the second method for calculating or interpolating where M times x3 minus x1 plus y1 is equal to y2. So my slope is 0.2 times x3, which is 23.9. That's my temperature that I want to find it at, minus my starting x value, which is 23, plus my starting y value, which is 2.8. And that will give me my, it should be Y3, that will give me my vapor pressure. That will give me my vapor pressure at that temperature, 23.9. Yep, Jamie. So if we actually got 24.0, we won't have to do any of this? Right. However, on the test, you're going to have to. So okay. um, since you've got the notes on it, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's up to you if you want to change your data so you get more practice on it, or if you just want to follow along. Okay. All right, so. So I get a Y3 of 2.98 kPa. Yeah, Rhea. It won't change, not if you're looking at the way we did it like this. X3 is the point you're trying to interpolate to. So X3 is always going to be the point between the two points. So this equation Rhea, wouldn't change. The values for X1, the, the actual values would change from problem to problem. Yep, Marley. So is our final answer always supposed to equal or be really close or similar to the Y1? No. It all depends on, like, so with this table, this table goes up by, like, twos or, in some instances, ones. But then up here, it starts to skip. So it just all depends on the table you're interpolating. If you're going up by ones, then your value, yes, is going to be very close to the y1. But up here, you're going to see bigger changes. And you know, close is qualitative. It's hard to say. What, what do you mean by close? What you think is close might be something different to me. Mm -hmm. All right, but the fun's not done. Because, Tegan, this is in KPA. We needed a millimeters of mercury. So we're running out of room. That's OK. 2.98 kPa converts to millimeters of mercury. 101.325 kPa is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. Let's put a decimal point there so that we have at least three sig figs. That's just a conversion factor that I get from my appendices, or you can memorize it. 22.4 millimeters of mercury. That's just a conversion fact between millimeters of mercury and kPa. From, I believe, Appendix K or O. If you have a question, let me know. I'll come over and look at your data if you need me to. So, 
So then this, you just go right directly to your name. You do have to control the controls. You still have to control the controls. Any other questions? If not, then let's plug it into our table over here. Vapor pressure was 2.98. We converted it to millimeters of mercury, 22.4. Rachel, could you read off your uh, H's for me? Uh, 15, 23, 32, 40, 48, 57, 65, and 70. And just one second. What was the last one? Um, 775. Okay. What was our volume? We calculated the volume yesterday, right? Yeah. 880. 872, 865, 847, 838, 830, and 824. Okay. All right, we're getting there. Last thing we got to do, well, not the last, but close to the last, is calculate the pressure. So on the front page, the equation for pressure was take your atmospheric pressure P naught minus the vapor pressure, add to it that factor which converts water into mercury, D minus H, divided by 13.55. So let's do one example together. And then um, I'll let you do the rest of them in your calculator, but let's do at least one example to show that you know what to do. Wait, is that an O minus D? That is D. Oh, D. D, as in? Dog. Yeah. That looks like Draconia. I know, that really improved. So, the atmospheric pressure was 761 millimeters of mercury. We're subtracting off our vapor pressure because we collected the gas over water. We want to subtract out the pressure due to water, so minus 22.4. Add to that D minus H. So the first D is 100, the first H is 15. Of course, you're using your own data. <clears throat> to make this a little bit easier for you, Notice that this term does not change, okay? These two numbers aren't changing, so 761 minus 22.4. Wait, where'd you get D? D is from the first column, right here. So it's just, okay. So this is 738. With sig figs, I have to round to the one spot, so it's 738 millimeters. Okay, so that number, that 738 is not going to change. That will speed your calculations up just a bit. The D and the H do change. This is 85 divided by 13.55. Oh, and I didn't put all my sig figs. Bad, bad. Naughty, naughty. Okay, so that would actually come out to be 85.0 over 13.55. So when I do this division, I'll end up with C three sig figs when I'm done. Wait, would it be 70 or 739? Because it's 0.6 or just 70? Yours might be a little bit different. Okay. Because everybody had different temperatures. Yeah. So my temperature was... 23.9, your temperature was 24. <coughs> so your KPA was a little bit different. Okay. So you might round off a little different up there. Yeah. So 85 divided by 13.55. I get, with three sig figs, 
seven millimeters. <coughs> so my pressure becomes seven thirty eight plus six point two seven. There's my guess. There's my guess. So when I add, I round to the guess furthest to the left. So the guess furthest to the left is in the ones place. So I'm going to round to the ones place. Jamie was right. 761 minus 22.4 is 738.6. You know better not to make me look bad on camera. <laughs> 739, so I'll go add that mistake up there. Uh, so then this becomes 745 millimeters of mercury. So we do this for every single one? You do this for every single one, but it, it will go faster because you know that the 739 doesn't change. All you got to do is change the D and the H, divide it by 13.55, and then the way the sig figs work out won't differ. You're always going to be rounding off to the ones place because this guy's, the guess is in the ones place. So go ahead and calculate all of them out. All of them should be in the ones place. I'm just going to pause this for a second.